the Thoughty Orty podcast. Why are sensory supports and environmental adjustments important? What do you think I, in, in terms of the so child kind of parent side of things? I, it means that your child can access their community. It means that um, they are accessing learning opportunities um, with the spoon theory. Um, we're using their spoons for the right things. If, mm -hmm. if they are in so sensory overload or even approaching sensory overload, um, we need to be monitoring the environment and making adjustments so that they have a calm nervous system. And um, it means that they are open to connection and they can access communication. Mm -hmm. um, it basically just, it makes life possible for them. And it's mental health. Yeah care hmm. yeah i think i like um in terms of like the the adult side of things i think you know you could probably say the same just for you know different things like you know in in a workplace if there's a difficult sensory environment and you're like in an open office plan or you're not allowed to listen to music or put earbuds in and stuff while you're working um or even, you know, shades or something to kind of, or reducing the, the light um, exposure in an office. All of that stuff kind of adds an, an element of, well, it's, it's distracting for one. Um, it's It can cause you a lot of um, stress and sort of burnout yeah. in the long run, um, especially if you're working like a nine to five in an office. Um, and it, it doesn't really allow you space to to do the the job that you you need to do yeah or um, to do it well or to do it well exactly i i think um, about that with my daughter's accommodations at school uh the accommodations help her to um be her most successful and and i just be able to i mean the word perform is <laughs> not the right word yeah, yeah, but yeah. um to be able to perform at your best and and uh, feel good about what you are producing. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing a lot of like the well-being side of things, but also like the um, the productivity side of things. Because yeah. I know that a lot of schools, you know, their their funding, their budgets and stuff, they're all determined on what score they get from like Ofsted in the UK yeah. or some other kind yeah, of regulator. State testing here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not giving a child a, a break to, you know, get some proprioceptive input, uh, they yeah. are not going to do the test well. <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's unfortunate that's what the standard is, but, um, you know, we're those accommodations, those sensory breaks are, are so important. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a good sort of, of our element to it because, you know, when we, when we think about sensory supports, we think about removing things, but we don't often think about adding things, which is like just as important. Stims and yeah, as you said, with m movement breaks and, um, you know, some of the schools that I used to to work with, um, they had these amazing like, I don't know exactly what to call them, but they're kind of this. It's like a a, a piece of e equipment, park equipment outside, where you have like a bar that you can hold on. And then there's like two swigging um, arms for like your legs that you can just kind of oh, you yeah, can yeah. rock back and forth as the two two legs, or you can you can do side side kind side. Kind of like an elliptical machine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sort of like that. Um, <laughs> and all the other teachers used to laugh at me because I used to um, I used to um, go on it as well, like during my breaks, and just just. <laughs> Go on it, and I, that should be at every school. I and mean, I feel that way. <laughs> I just with that particular piece of equipment that you're describing—that's vestibular and proprioceptive input, which is mm -hmm. so regulating. Uh, in my daughter's classroom, she and I built a calm down corner, and oh, nice. I uh, I put a sheet over a desk to reduce that visual input, and put some stem toys in there mm -hmm. or tools, I should say, uh, and she has access to her noise canceling headphones. Like all of those are so important. Um, That's brilliant. The accommodations are 
sometimes as a, on the parent side of things, I can feel like I, you know, am I, does she really need these things? But yeah. uh, the truth is she does. And in order for her to be regulated, uh, she needs those things. And for my son, um, he has, he's, has very strong sensory needs uh, mm. between taking things away and adding the right things back in. Uh, it's a science making yes, sure that yeah. um, his needs are being supported. So important. And I think, I think like a lot of people, they'll, you know, if you were to kind of present that to schools or to parents, they would say like, well, how are they going to cope in the real world when there's noises and there's lights <laughs> and there's all of this stuff? I'm like, you do know that you can have sensory supports out and about. Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. In and that's, as well. Like, I think that that's what's so important about promoting um, these safe practices and teaching parents is because then you have, potentially we could have a whole generation of children who grow up with compassion and who care about mental health and who know how to self-advocate uh, for what they need. Uh, mm -hmm. And they will respect somebody else who needs to access those things. And it's, I'm, it makes me excited for the long-term um, payoff of mm. if we can raise a generation of kids who know how to advocate for their needs. Um, it, it would be a much better, <laughs> a much better culture. Hey, up. Just popping on to say thank you for listening to this podcast this far. If you could do me a real solid, please make sure to rate the podcast if you're on a podcasting streaming service and do all that like, subscribe, comment stuff on YouTube. Damn, even send a heart in the comments if you don't feel like typing. Make sure to check out my link tree, which is always down below in the description, or head over to my Instagram page at Thomas Henley UK for daily blogs, podcast updates, and weekly lives. This podcast is sponsored by my favorite noise cancelling, noise reducing earbuds that you can adjust the volume on. Really, really great thing. They're called D Buds, and you can find the affiliate link down in the description of this podcast for a 15% off discount. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. That's all from me. Hmm. I think that's that's a really important thing that you touch on in terms of self advocacy because it's often sort of due to the nature of of autism being autistic and kind of not really fitting fitting in per se and perhaps struggling a bit in in terms of communication. Um, that can be really really tough. I mean, it's tough for any any child or well, any adult as well um, sometimes to advocate for your own needs. Um, when there's this kind of no set of normative rules that you have to yeah. apply to. And, you know, each time you deviate from that normative role, people kind of point it out and say, get, get back in line and do, do this. You've been masking for yeah. your whole life and you start to unmask and uh, that <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> conversation too. <laughs> but I, um, if you can, if you can support kids to where they don't have to mask, or um, you teach them, you know, I know that there's a whole uh, demographic of people who teach their children how to mask when it's necessary. Um, mm -hmm. And, but for me, I think it's, I mean, the bottom line in our home is I want everybody to feel safe with not masking. And if we can, um, move with compassion and feel positive about accommodations, then uh, we're, we're helping each other to have calm nervous systems and mm -hmm. be able to um, be open to connection. And I, I think as well, it's worth touching on the point that, you know, autistic people, we do have, different sensory systems some things are hypersensitive some things are hyposensitive yeah. so insensitive or oversensitive um and the but the thing is is that sensory things affect everybody um yes. they just affect everybody at different levels yeah and it's it's quite interesting talking to neurotypicals about things like stimming because 
you know, there's that there's different categories of steering. You know, I talked to OTNL about sort of um the sensory worlds and stimming and stuff. Um and there's like there's like little stems and there's like those things that everyone does like rubbing their hands or like tapping their Trying leg. Their hair. Yeah. Yeah. Or or having a snack or having a drink or you know, there's there's so many things that people do in their life, whether they're autistic or not, that are regulating in terms of sensory. Yes. It's just when you when you're autistic, it's a bit different and your sensory needs are kind of some of them are a lot more, you know, you need a lot more input. And so yeah. we get these kind of big stims like rocking and spinning and um, And the sensory joy or the autistic joy that comes from some stimming as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a really interesting thing that like differs from neurotypical people and oh I don't yeah know, like I, I was <laughs> hey up youtube hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far if you want to check out the full episode you can find it here on my youtube channel under the podcast section or you can go to spotify apple google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services if you have enjoyed this video thus far please make sure to like Perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me and drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. I was, I was at this presentation um, in Birmingham. It's called the Emotional uh, Dis Dysregulation um, something uh, Association, maybe. EDA um and it was kind of it was funded by the the Commonwealth Games which is it was a really cool opportunity to kind of go and speak I did like a talk about like alexithymia and there was this um uh dancer called Kaya who does this who does like aerial based like movements and stuff um and they brought this uh hoop this like structure with like sandbags and stuff. My daughter wants to try that. <laughs> like a like a string with like a hoop on. Yeah. Um it's so cool. And after I after I did my presentation, I was just I just went to Kai and I was like, you know, can can, can I have a go on this? Um <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, sure. Um and then I, I just sat on it and she was like showing me different techniques and stuff. And then at the end she like span me around like multiple times just like really, really fast to must have looked really funny for no, six foot guy, six foot Did three you love guy. It, just, though? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> and it, I, I, it's the same with like roller coasters and theme parks yeah. and stuff. There is just no comparison to the amount of euphoria that I feel yeah. from spinning and like moving and rocking. And yeah. it's like, I, I will never forget um, snorkeling in Maui and like snorkeling with fish and turtles and coral mm. and just like, that was the ultimate experience, like sensory experience for me. And um, yeah. you got like I will the, never the forget noise that. being doubled yeah. by the water. It and was incredible. You see all the, the light <laughs> and the. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 there was no getting me out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can... actually, I saw a, tur a turtle for the first time in the wild um, in Turkey. It was, it was really cool. We thought it was a rock. We're kind of on these like pedal boats um god they're horrible to to use but we're on these pedal boats in this like massive lake and stuff and there was these there was this like sort of thing just poking up and we were like is that a turtle or is that a rock because we know that turtles are around here um and it was a turtle and uh we basically just followed it around for about an hour that's awesome we weren't getting too we weren't getting too close and like distressing it or anything but yeah um yeah, they could bite or, you. or touching it um yeah but yeah, we were just kind of, I was just kind of observing it. It was really cool. <laughs> um, I love stuff like that. I like, I mean, we, we could talk about the, the, the morals and stuff yeah. implications for yeah. aquatics places with like and green spaces and, and nature. That. Yeah. That's, um, that's a big part I, of I our life. I love aquariums, but I'm also very aware that they use excessive amounts of Valium on a lot of their <laughs> creatures. So I, I tend not to go anywhere. No, you should look into it. It's, it's a bit, bit insane what they do. Um, 
my new special interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, so we kind of have an idea of why they're important. And we know that for a fact, you know, it doesn't matter if the world has other sensory things that are going to occur. You can always have your sensory aids aids with you. Um, it's something yeah, it's so that important. I do. Something that yeah, I do as an autistic adult. We don't leave the house without the headphones, um, sunglasses. We actually, I just got my son some new uh, lenses. It's called FL41 lens. FL41. And it's kind of like a rose colored lens and it does uh, eliminate certain wavelengths of light. And it had his uh, neurologist and ophthalmologist both recommended it, and it has alleviated his migraines. Uh, uh. He doesn't need pain medication anymore because uh, he's wearing them, which is really interesting. Um, so I, think, I, the, I have some 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 blue light glasses. I actually got them because it's different from blue work. light, like the the computer blue light glasses. It's different from that, but the um, I think it just it shows the value of these tools and mm -hmm. that it's alleviating pain. And if yeah. you can look at uh, sensory overwhelm as a painful experience, uh, that can like help parents to register uh, that our kids aren't just being dramatic or yeah, picky that's eaters. A big one. They are mm -hmm. genuinely um, experiencing life in a different way and in distress. Uh, 